Hello everyone. Welcome to a short video to review functions, function notation, representation of functions using formulas, tables, and especially representations of functions using graphs. The objectives for this review byte are to describe the relationship between the graph of a function and its inputs and outputs. Additionally, we are interested in being able to translate between the representations of a function as an equation, a graph, and a table. So to recall, what is a function? When we say function in mathematics, a function is just a relationship, mathematical relationship, between two quantities, referred to as the input and the output. When we talk about the input quantity, this is usually the quantity that you know or can control. When we talk about the output quantity, this is usually the quantity that you want to influence or that you want to predict. The quintessential example is a function that relates the time um, with an object's position if you have an object that is moving. In a situation like that, there is a relationship between the time that's passed and where the object is located. In that situation, we typically use time as our input variable. Why? Because time in that situation is usually the quantity that we know or we can measure very easily using just a stopwatch. In that situation, the output quantity is usually given to position because position in this example is usually the quantity that we want to predict or sometimes influence. Now we use function notation as shorthand, as symbolic shorthand, to help the reader to know what quantity is the input and what quantity is the output. And function notation looks, for example, like what we have here, y equals p, and then in parentheses, the variable t. And we read out loud y equals p of t, p of t. When someone gives you this equation in symbols, they're communicating a lot of information in a very short uh, period of time in a very small space. This is communicating, for example, that this quantity y um, which is on the far side of the equal sign, y is what we are calling the output quantity for short. This quantity called t, which is showing up inside of the parentheses, this is saying that the input quantity is being nicknamed t for short. And this is also telling you the name, the title, or the label of the relationship between y and t, the name label of the function. In this case, the name of the function is p, this uh, variable that's sitting outside the parentheses surrounding our input variable. Now, if you want to describe a specific function, a specific relationship between some input quantity and some output quantity, one very common way to describe a specific function is to use a formula. So for example, if I were to use function notation to describe a specific function, um, I could give you an example, the one we have here, which says f of t is equal to t squared plus 3t. So this is communicating in short that our input variable is being called t for short because that's the number, quantity that's showing up inside the parentheses in the function notation. This is communicating that the name of our function, the label of our function is called f for short. And this is communicating that the output associated with any given input is given by this formula on the far side of the equal sign t squared plus 3t. So this is communicating that if you wanted to find the output associated with any given input, that you would find that output using the following steps. Step number one, square the input. That's that t squared in the formula. Step number two, multiply your input by three. That's that three t in the formula. And then final step to find the associated output would be to add together the t squared and the three t. You can also represent functions using tables. A table shows explicitly a collection of inputs and their associated outputs. For example, here we have an input of minus 3 being associated with an output of 0, an input of minus 2 being associated with an output of minus 2, 
an input of minus 1 being associated with an output of minus 2, and so on. So another way to represent functions is to use a table. The final way to represent functions is to use a graph. Graphs are really valuable, for example, for seeing trends in the function over time. When you represent a function using a graph, you use horizontal coordinates to represent the inputs and vertical coordinates to represent the outputs. For example, in this graph, we see that a couple of points on the graph have coordinates, for example, negative 3 horizontal, 0 vertical. So that's communicating that if you plug negative 3 into this function, then 0 would be the associated output. This point here on the far right side has a horizontal coordinate of 1 and a vertical coordinate of 4. So this would communicate that if I plugged 1 into the function, an output of 4 would result from that. You can interpret this graph sort of backwards as well. If your desire was to achieve an output of minus 2, then graphically you can see that there are two ways to get that output. One way to get an output of minus 2 would be to plug in negative 1. Another way to get an output of minus 2 would be to plug in negative 2. So the graph is a great way of showing trends over time and showing a lot of information about the function in a very compact space. Now I want to emphasize that these three examples that we've seen on the previous couple of slides are all different ways of representing the exact same function. We have the formulaic representation here on the far left, the table representation and the graphical representation. These are all three different ways of communicating the same relationship between inputs and outputs. For example, if I plug t equals 1 into the formula notation, 1 squared plus 3 times 1 gives me associated output of 4. The table also says that if I plug in t equals 1, my associated output is 4. And the graph also says that if I plug in t equals 1, the associated output is 4. So three different ways of communicating the exact same relationship between input and output. Now, as we go into the next couple of lectures in Calculus 2, here is the major takeaway that is really, really important for you to understand for this class. The major takeaway is that when you represent a function graphically, the different outputs of a function correspond to different heights of points on its graph. So to reiterate in the previous example, if I have output of, for example, 10 associated with an input of 2, then that corresponds on the graph to a point with a height of 10 units located over this horizontal position of 2, a height of 10 corresponding to an output of 10, corresponding to what you get from the formula if you plug in 2, the result will be 10. So that's the major takeaway. Significance of a graph. For this class, the major significance, the outputs of a function correspond to heights of points on the graph.